Folks, I love Ewoks, and I really love talking about the Ewok movies. In my last video, I talked about an Ewok adventure. Today, I'm going to talk about Battle for Endor. It was the second TV movie that got released by ABC around the same time in late November. Uh, it was in 1985. Again, when we saw the ads for it, we were super excited to see Mace and uh, Sindel back and the family. At least that's what we thought we were going to see. And my dad recorded it, and the next day we watched it. And the opening uh, scene, I stood there with my mouth wide open. You see, when George had been approached to make a second movie by ABC, ABC originally wanted this to be a TV show, a live action TV show. Can you imagine that? A live action TV show with Ewoks. But George's like, no, we're not going to do that. We'll do another movie. And I think originally he had talked about doing extra movies. Of course, that would never come to pass. This would be the final movie. And when they were pitching him ideas about things to do with the family and the Ewoks, George had just seen Heidi, the, the old movie with his daughter, and they had both loved it, and so he wanted it to be, you know, the next Ewok movie to be similar to Heidi, where Sindel becomes an orphan, and where she meets an old man and befriends him. And so they changed, they radically changed the script, and so in the very opening scene, all of Sindel's family dies. Uh, I think she, she, and, she and Wicked are enjoying some good times. Wicked can now speak some basic uh, so that you can understand him a little bit better. They realize that the Ewoks are being attacked. They go into an Ewok village, which is on the ground. Let me explain this. That the EU actually explains why in the TV movie the, the, some of the Ewok cuts are on the ground. The real reason was production costs. They couldn't build things up in trees, even though there were a few tree houses in an Ewok adventure. But Battle for Endor, they had some huts on the ground, and they do explain that. Kevin J. Anderson explains that, I think, in Star Wars Illustrated Universe, where some Ewoks were having to study different things, and they'd have to have some huts on the ground. The Marauders have come, these space Marauders who wrecked on the planet years ago. They're too dumb to figure out how to get their uh, spacecraft to fly again. In fact, we don't even know what happened to their spacecraft. They've been, along for, been around for so long. But they attack the Ewoks. They're old enemies of the Ewoks. And so they hijack them, and supposedly, I, I don't remember if this is Star Wars Illustrated Universe, or whether I read this online at StarWars.com a long time ago, but I think they were having some festival on the ground, which is why they were able to capture them all and why you saw them get captured on the ground. Uh, e either way, though, she arrives, her mother is laying dead, which is kind of jarring. You're like, oh gosh, they already killed her off. Mace is dirty. He's screaming at Sindel to run. He's firing the blaster. And then uh, she runs away, sees an explosion, looks on her little life monitor, and Mace's light goes out. And instantly like that, one of the biggest stars that you loved in the Ewok movies is gone. We were like shocked. I mean, you know, we thought Mace was annoying, you know, in the first movie, but we didn't want him to die. In fact, Eric Walker in his autobiography says when he read the script, he cried. He didn't want to die. He had so much fun in the first movie, he was really looking forward to the next movie. And then he read that he had one scene where he dies. And he was just super upset, you know, that this happened. Because originally, when they were talking, it was going to be him and Sindel and maybe the family on another adventure. And he was looking forward to that. So I can imagine being that age and being told, you know, something you love so much and you got to do and you were super excited about, you know, doing a second movie and then only to find out you're going to die in the opening scene. That would have crushed me too. Uh, but anyway, uh, she gets with her dad. They have a little heartfelt moment, and then he dies. Uh, you know, er everyone dies, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, this is super sad." Well, then of course she uh, befriends uh, what Wicked and her escape. They befriend an old uh, codger out in the woods, uh, Noah, played by Wilford Brindley. Uh, he's the um, Quaker uh, Quaker oatmeal guy, and he's the diabetes guy and everything. It's kind of harsh to call him the diabetes guy. Jeez. Speaking of Wilford Brindley, though, he hated the directors of Battle for Endor. Uh, they were the Wheat Brothers. In fact, he hated them so much, he refused to do scenes with them. So Joe Johnson, who actually directed the Captain America movies, uh, he came in and filmed the scenes with Wilford Brindley just so they could get everything filmed. Now, uh, there were other characters in this. I want to move on here. Uh, there was Teak, the little fast-moving uh, creature from Endor, which we loved as kids. We loved Teak. 
The humor was there. We loved everything. These movies were pretty dark, too. There's Carell, the uh, night sister, who back in the day, they just called her a sorceress because they didn't know what she was. But then Kevin Janderson's, once again, his Star Wars Illustrated Universe says, oh yeah, by the way, that was a night sister from Dothamir. She had been exiled from her planet and sent and she crashed on Endor or they exiled Endor. And I was like, shut up, that makes so much sense. I love how the EU connected everything here. And so the Marauders, they know they have some power generator for a starship and they know there's something in their little brain that says this is very important, but they don't know what it is. They think it's a secret to the stars, but they don't even know what that means. So eventually they, you know, uh, Sindel and Wicked free the Ewoks, they escape from the Marauders and then they have to prepare for a big battle to face the Marauders once again, and this time, they are victorious. Noah, of course, has a big battle uh, with uh, Tarak, the, the main Marauder, and dude, that guy was scary. You talk about scary characters. First off, I talked about the Gorax. Freaked me out when I first saw him, but Tarak, oh my gosh, I was freaked out even more over him. I was like, dude, that good dude looks freaky. By the way, speaking of Tarak, I actually got his autograph. I got him and Mace uh, Tatwani's autographs at a Comic-Con and uh, his name is Carl Strucken. He actually played uh, uh, Lurch in The Addams Family. And I was asking him what it was like to be on set. He said it was great. Lucas was there, he said, almost every day. He'd come in, talk to the character, talk to the actors, talk to the set directors, kind of give some points on, you know, suggestions on this and that, story shots, um, uh, clothing, set pieces. He would just give his, you know, a little, you know, two cents to the movie, and he also did some of the editing. So once again, here we see another example where Lucas is heavily involved in the movie, the making of the movie. So uh, that was really nice to hear. But, uh, oh, and by the way, they even came out with a soundtrack, yes, with that had like bits and pieces of uh, music. I think it was Peter Berenstein, I think is what it was called. And he wrote a fantastic score for both of these movies. And when this uh, CD came out in 1997, it came out the same time as they reprinted the uh, Christmas uh, album on CD. And then they put out the Shadows of the Empire uh, uh, soundtrack. Man, that was a big year. 97 was a big year for Star Wars soundtracks. I got quite a few, but that Ewok soundtrack, I have never listened to anything more than that one. I listen to that one all the time. I love the music from that soundtrack. It is so awesome. And by the way, I love this movie. Just like the last one before it, I thought this one was great. They are very dark for children's movies in the 80s. When you think about it today, I don't think they'd make movies that dark now. There are some cool scenes. Yes, it looks. some of those scenes look very cheap right now. However, it was tons of fun watching it, and I have tons of good memories uh, watching over them again. Now, some of the characters that were in, uh, some of the Ewok characters from an Ewok adventure didn't make it over to Battle for, for Endor, but that's okay. I don't mind that. Overall, I think these movies are worth your time to watch, especially if you're an Ewok fan like me. In fact, this is these movies kept me as an Ewok fan because the cartoon was going strong at this time too, or I think it was about to go next. I think the cartoon came next. But anyway, it was a great day, a great time to be a Star Wars fan, to have these Star Wars movies Movies, TV movies at that come out. So give me your thoughts. What did you think about the Ewok movies? Have you seen them? Are you interested in them? Did you love them? Did you hate them? And if you are from Europe, did this one come out in theaters too? Did you watch the first one in theaters? What was that like? I really want to know. I really wish I could have seen these in theaters. Again, like I said, my dad had them on Betamax, uh, both these movies, and we would constantly be popping those in all the time. We watched these all the time as kids. Heck, I, I remember as a writing, we had to write stories in, in school, and so I just rewrote the entire story for Battle for Endor. And my teacher gave me an A because I guess I'd written like tons of pages, but I wouldn't even finish. I just kept writing, 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 you know, scene for scene of what happened. She thought, wow, this kid has a lot of vivid imagination. No, I was, I was you know, plagiarizing a TV movie I'd seen about Ewoks. But anyway, love the movies. Well worth your time. Uh, great stuff. Folks, I've enjoyed these videos. See you next time with more.